I am 30 years old. Now, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Oh, you don't look that old, Brad. Oh, you look like a young, fresh-faced teenager. But no, it's true. I am 30. And as the astute mathematicians out there will be able to tell you, 30 is closer to natural death than 29. It's true. What that means, though, is because I'm 30, I've now been making visual effects, images, and short films and stuff now for... 18 years. So what we're going to do is go back and critique some of my old work. Some of this stuff will have never seen the light of day. Some of this stuff I may have shown to close friends. But for you today, I'm going to reveal all. So what we'll do is we'll start with the first ever, the first ever visual effects style image I ever created. It was 2003 and it was this. That's right, that is me. <laughs> oh god, you can even see the seam. There's a line down the middle where the pictures have crossed over. You can tell that I was trying to look as cool as possible on the one that's on the left hand side and then as weird as possible on the right. So on the left hand side, I've spiked my hair up. I'm wearing a, a skull and crossbones ring. The title of this picture, by the way, is called Make Fun of the Goonie. That's the first thing I ever did, was a cloning picture. But that was a couple of years before I actually got into all this stuff. It was just something I tried. Okay, next up is 2005. 2005 is when my mum got me a camcorder for uh, my birthday because she knew I was getting into filming. I made a sitcom that was a Friends ripoff. It's not good. I'll, I'll roll a clip and then I'll talk about why... This is not only extremely impressive, but also incredibly sad. Thanks a lot for this. I've been looking for a decent place for ages. Well, if you're here for a long time, so it will do, we'll scrap the rent because there's no point in your paying if you practically live here, is there? I suppose you're right. Well, I've got some like savings stashed away, but not much to hold off a rent for a long time. I really need a job. Yeah. Us too. Well, every time I like, get around to getting a job, Harry always, you know, screws it up. So what you just watched there was part of an episode of Mates, which is the sitcom I made. The reason that this is sad is because nobody would film with me, so I ended up playing every part myself. There's loads of channels that film themselves doing all like different parts. Uh, Ryan George being one of the more famous ones. And it's strange that back then I was like, I used to think, because I, I would never show this to anyone. I was massively embarrassed of doing this. But it's weird now to think back that I was doing something which, I mean, if I carried on doing this, I could have pioneered it. I could be the first person. I mean, anyone who's watched my recent sketches will know that I've started doing this myself in my flat because it's a lot easier just to film with yourself. But I told you this was also really impressive. And the reason why is because, as I said, I didn't have any editing software. So you might be thinking, well, how did you edit it together? I didn't. I set up a camera, I put on a shirt, I used the remote to press record, I performed a, a section, a line, a take, and then I would stop the recording with the remote, I would change shirts, move the camera, and then film again. And I did this for the entire thing. The problem is, stopping and starting with the remote wasn't reliable, there's loads of bits where my sentences are just cut off. What is your first name? Tom. And you can also see the remote in almost every single shot because I'm like this. There's some shots where I pressed it and it wouldn't work and you can see me reaching to try and do it a bit more. There's one where it comes around the side of a door like... Like that. But yeah, that was Mates. Let's move on to the next year, 2006. 2006 is where I really started to make visual effects. So I discovered Ryan Weber, who did lightsaber effects. Through him, I learned about Premiere. I learned about Photoshop. After Effects came a lot later. I didn't realize that After Effects was a thing. What I used to do was use Premiere to turn my video clips into film strips, which were basically video files that could be opened frame by frame in Photoshop. And I used to edit through them. The first ever visual effects shot I did, discounting the crappy split screen thing I showed you earlier, was this one. Tss, tss, tss. 
That's it. Short few second clip of me using a lightsaber. And the lightsaber looks shit. Like, I, I was following a tutorial. I don't understand why it looks that bad. It's fine. Like, it's a good start. I was only a kid. I was learning. But this is when I went through a phase of making so many visual effects. Things like various lightsaber clips, me swinging stuff around in the garden. Oh god, here's an embarrassing one. The Willy Saber. <laughs> Fucking piece. Oh, what, what, why did you do that? Why, the thing about this one is, why am I wearing sunglasses and looking like I'm cool? Like, this isn't cool. Nothing about this is cool. At least the previous lightsaber ones, if you swing them around, look like they could be perceived in a way by a certain crowd to be a cool thing to do. Like, I'm not doing my own visual effects, I'm playing with... Why? I, I look at the camera like I'm fucking sing them. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, this is something I would still do today, but I would do it ironically knowing it was meant to be bad and cringy, not doing it thinking I was cool. I also went through a phase of really liking to give myself wings. I actually made my own wings in a 3D modeling program, which, looking back now, I, it's, it's really impressive. It's genuinely impressive. I, I got a free, I think it was called Animator with an 8. I used that software to make myself a full set of wings and then did various scenes where I was using them. I mean, they look terrible, but to think that I made them myself back then is genuinely impressive. So, you know, hats off to early Brad. Well done. I've also got some Wolverine images here. I remember these look terrible. Again, I, I 3D modeled the claws, but I wasn't very good at compositing back then. So you can just tell that the bits don't line up properly. I also went through a phase of making weird animated GIFs, and I'm not quite sure why. Here's a short film GIF I made. Two thousand and seven, probably one of my more productive years. Again, more lightsaber tests, uh, a, vi a video test with wings. This one's impressive. Look at that. I mean, you can see the edges and the wings look shite, but <laughs> the bit at the end where I thrust. The thing is, I it looks shit, and it's a little embarrassing thinking about how bad it does look and how I'm trying to look cool doing it. Like I wasn't just doing the effect, I was trying to look cool. And it, that implies to me that at some point I was expecting to show this to people and be like, look how cool I am. But the thing I like the most about these is the, I th think about now that how much effort they would have taken to con construct, because I made those wings feather by feather. That was the only way I could figure out how to do it. I think I used an image template and made feather by feather wings. There's a few other effects, like one where I made a coin float, again, CG compositing which I've not done a lot of recently. I really want to get back into that because I really enjoyed that. Well, I did a few warps. They're quite near. Here was my first actual lightsaber duel. You can tell the choreography is not great, but honestly, I don't care. Like, I, I, we put something together. If anyone's wondering why the lightsabers look so strange, at the time, I was using a piece of software called Particle Illusion to create the lightsabers. And the problem with using that is that what happens is it creates an incredibly long trail which is why the lightsabers look like they've got huge streams going off behind them. The reason I did it like that is because it was a lot easier to use that program to go through frame by frame than it was to use a Photoshop film strips like I used to. Because on those you had to draw the lightsabers on, whereas on this one you just had to move two points. If anyone's made lightsabers recently using Video Core Pilot's plugin, it was basically that, but the lightsabers didn't look as good. Here's something I was really proud of though. My first proper 3D compositing with a camera move. I manually tracked this in, and I was super impressed that it came out looking vaguely okay. Like, obviously you can see the ground, like I didn't get rid of the plane that it was sat on, that I put the shadow on. There was probably a way to have made that non-renderable. But still, like, if you take a, a freeze frame from that sh that video and look at it, it doesn't look too bad. Like, it kind of fits into the scene in a way. Again, super impressed with young Brad. I'm almost jealous of this. Because now, with, with the knowledge I've got now, and the time I could put into these things, and the my ability to pick out what doesn't work, I could create things like this, but way better, and I just haven't put a lot of the time in. 
like this this Christmas project is probably the most time I've put into making things myself in a long time and I'm actually really enjoying it I really enjoy being super busy and constantly making stuff but I miss doing this a lot of this stuff the visual effects stuff is it was it was the the, re the reason I got into editing in the first place it wasn't for the editing it was for the visual effects it was to make lightsabers it was to give myself wolverine claws it was to make coins float and give myself a huge glowing penis 3d modeling and cgi became a huge part of what i used to do back when i was in school and when i was in early college some of the some of them are great like i actually really like some of these 3d models i've made uh, a lot of them came from tutorials so they're not my own pieces but still like just check out this one this is one of the earliest ones i ever made and all I, all I did was follow a tutorial to make a bolt and then I arranged them in like a cool way and put a light in and it's a really simple image but if you think about when I made this and how the final product actually looks quite cool like even the composition is pretty decent on this again super proud of young Brad before we move on I also went through a weird phase where I kept trying to change the color of my eyes and some of them just ended up looking like I've been had the shit kicked out of me so I was still making things in 2008 but I was getting better. You can tell from a lot of these things that I was getting better. So here are a few examples of things I made then. In terms of stills, there's one where I had an extra finger. It's almost seamless. There's one where I stretched my face like a demon. There's one where I was putting my hand through a TV. There's one where I made myself tiny on top of a television, which was actually really cool. I made myself into the Hulk. I did some Sith Lightning stuff. This image here is a promo image for a short film I was going to make, but didn't make it in the end. I was also still getting really into 3D modeling. I think these two Pokemon were made using 3DS Max, I think. I don't think they were animator. They're too good to be animator. While we're in the 2008 era, this was my college time. Some friends that I was in a film class with came up with our own studio called Goldmine Creations. Here's the little ident for that. And we made various short films. Like, they weren't very good. We didn't have a lot of time to film or edit them. But they're always great to go back and look through. These included various visual effects as well. Again, I didn't put a lot of time into them. They're all very rough and scrappy. But they get the point across. And at the time, I don't think anyone else could do any visual effects. So when I made these films in my college, they were already going to be like a step above everyone else. Because no one else could do explosions and eye colour changes and whatever else I was doing. There was also one project I made that I really want to make a proper version of at some point because I love the concept. And it was the idea of this person conducting a piece of music using the sounds of the world around them. And it didn't come out very well, but it was fine. I, I, I participated in this myself. I can show you a clip of that now. I made too many of these visual effects tests for me to go through every single one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to single out a few and just we'll have a laugh at those. Like the, the really, really crap ones are the really good ones. It's almost like I knew I was going to lose my hair. I'm actually really proud of this one. My entire head in this is made from my forehead. And then I used various lighting tools in Photoshop to make it look like one side is light and one side is dark. And honestly, it's a little bit crude, but the effect works. And I think it still stands today. I'm, I'm quite proud of this picture. I also use the same picture to give myself Dean Winchester's hair. I'm not proud of this one. Look, I made my face stretch. Here is a clip of me using visual effects to light a candle. This one's a bit cringy because of how I end it, but to be honest, I'm, I'm so much older than this now, I don't even care. All right, check this out. Impressive, yeah? I don't even remember making this picture, but for some reason I decided to make a picture of me looking like I was carving shit into my head. Absolutely no idea why, and it looks terrible. Shame on you, young Brad. Oh, clear.
Clementine is one of my all-time favourite little visual effects things. I recorded this on a handheld digital camera in my university room because I was bored one day. And this is the kind of thing I always look back on and go, I'd love to do more stuff like this when I'm just bored and I just go, you know what, here's a camera, here's a clip, here's a visual effect, done. Oh yeah, look how cool I am. Look at me smile and look to, like, oh yeah, he's ready, he's ready for battle, that man with his Clementine. So we're into my university period now, and this is where Nisha's going to first turn up, because we're on the same course, and we were both doing these uh, visual effects editing stuff. So here's a picture of Nisha holding an electric ball. I don't know whether she'd be embarrassed with me showing these old pictures as well, so I won't show too many of her. I did some pretty cool pictures around this time though, like the climbing the tree picture was one I liked, uh, me dissolving before Thanos made it cool. One of my all-time favourite pictures I ever made is Garden Party, is what I've called it, and it's this one here. This is like the evolution of the first thing I made, that one I made of Make Fun of the Goonie. How many how many brads are in this picture? So, what is it, eight? And I don't think there's any way. The only place where I think it wasn't perfectly seamless, having a look now, the only place is the two at the front, their feet cross over. But I think I edited it in such a way that made it look like one of them was stood on the other one's foot and that's why he was annoyed. This picture's great. Like, very happy with this one. <laughs> this was a Facebook cover photo for a while, me just channeling lightning above Sheffield. Towards the end of university, I didn't make as many individual clips because I was obviously doing a lot of work, but there's the occasional thing. Like I was I was messing around with Realflow at uni, so here's a test of me using Realflow. And 2014 was the last year of my university time. Back then I was just making Facebook cover photos and using those. Here's me with an NG ball, a picture I still use today because I like this picture. Me diving like I'm a movie star. Another lightsaber picture. This was also the year where I made this clip, the annoying clone, although I didn't finish it for a few years later. <laughs> you shut up! Before we leave university though, let me show you a couple of my university pieces of work. Because they're okay, like they're not great. I didn't work the hardest I could have done at university, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with a couple of them. It feels like there's too many things to go through here as well, so I'm just going to quickly run through and put in a few clips of each. So I lost the high resolution version of this one, but this is me advertising a car. This is a pre-visualization that we made for a hypothetical short film. These are clips from a music video thing we had to do. I made some cool artwork, I'll just put them on the screen now because I can. Here's a scene where I did some CG compositing with a 3D motion track, which is fine. Here's a clip from an awful green screen movie we made where I played the Mad Kappa. This was the establishing shot of a final project I did where somebody was exploring fantasy locations. There's a few more, but I'm not going to just go through every single thing. There's, there's too many things in these folders, as I've said. What I'm probably going to be doing when I edit this video is cutting a huge amount out and just keeping the bits that seem more interesting. If people like this, then I can definitely go through more in the future. I could do videos where I like rev properly review them and get stuck in and then make fun of my younger self. Yes, that's what everyone wants to see. Brad shitting on his younger self. So I left university and once again went through a phase of trying to make visual effects. This one is currently my most viewed video on this channel, which is my Power Rangers teleport effect. I tried various interpretations of the orbing effect from Charmed. I made a clip where I had a conversation with a clone of myself. Oh, Legally Blonde is on Netflix. Can we, can we watch Legally Blonde? I'm not watching Legally Blonde. What? I want to No. Hey. Quite a few other ones here. Not going to go through in depth. I think the more interesting ones are definitely the, the earlier ones, because these later ones are the ones where I was actually realising what worked and was able to put more effort into them to make them better. Whereas the super early ones, the ones where I was just discovering my craft. So we'll, that was 2015. Let's just flick through the more recent years and see if there's anything particularly interesting to look at. Obviously, when I started working for Fact Fiend, making really stupid photoshopped images became something I did commonly. This picture was one I made during a drunk stream once that uh, I was told to make by the audience. This is Thanos as Mr. Blobby, one of the most terrifying images I've made to date. The only visual effects thing I have down for 2021 I'm not sure if I did more than this and they've just gone into other projects and aren't represented here, but the only visual effects test I did was this one. <sighs> Simple. Works. 
it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that I've definitely evolved over the years in how I uh, create these pictures, how I approach them. Some of the earlier ones, I'm not impressed with how they look, I'm impressed with how much time I put in. I was clearly very invested in making these things. I think I've gotten old enough now where I can look back on them without embarrassment. Like, it doesn't bother me to show people clips of that mate's show. It was a much younger version of me doing something he was enjoying, and the amount of effort I had to put in to change shirts between every shot, I think it's representative of how passionate I was about the thing I was doing. And I think I'm quite proud of that. I'm actually quite proud of that. It makes me sad that nowadays I don't have the same level of motivation whether it's because I have to do work or whether it's because I've got so much else going on in life. I really wish I could get that energy again where I just made things and just made things and made things and it didn't matter how good they were, all that mattered was me trying something new. Who knows, maybe this project is my entryway back into that way of doing things. Maybe when I finish this, when I've reached video 25, I'll look back at the project and say, I actually really enjoy doing this. I'm going to keep doing more and more videos of whatever I want. And it'll be nice if people watched them and uh, enjoyed them and said they were great, but more than anything, I just want to be able to, in another 18 years time, have to be able to look back and go, look at all this stuff I made then. We'll see. We'll see.